Okay. Let's move it to the share drive. Okay. Good evening. 630. Call the order meeting number 1847 of the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission. We are here physically in the John Daly meeting room in town hall, as well as on the Zoom platform. We have a quorum. We have all our regular members plus one alternate. So Frank, I'd ask you to sit in on any discussions of voting this evening. Yes. Thank you. Do we have any added agenda items? Excuse me not. Okay, there are, were no legal notices. So we are at the public participation portion of our meeting. Is there anybody in the audience that has anything they'd like to bring up that is not on tonight's agenda? Okay. And is there anyone online that would like to bring up a topic that is not on tonight's agenda? That is a no. Move on to approval of minutes. Regular meeting number 1846. It was held on March 14th. Does anybody have any alterations, edits, suggestions on the minutes? I see a typo on line 152. Jim's last name is spelled incorrectly. Oh. It's yeah. thorough instead of thorough. Yeah. Any other corrections? Anyway, if not, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of regular meeting 1846 held Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. With the correction in line 152, indicating um, it was Jim Thurz, T H U R Z. So replace the A with a Z. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. There are no new applications to receive. So we're moving on to performance bonds, actions, permit extensions, and road acceptance. First item is West River Farms bond reduction request. There is a memo that is just given to us this evening in regards to this. Anyone? Um, with anyone? Sure. So, um, Phase one is nearing completion um, over at West River Farms. They're moving on to phase two. They have already um, submitted bond ban for phase two. And so they're at requesting a reduction to phase one. And they've been working with um, between J.R. Russo and the town engineer to evaluate what's left to be done. And um, Len has recommended this recommended a reduction to $86,000 to cover maintenance and the temporary cul-de-sac we have as requested. Mm -hmm. It's also pointed out just a couple of items that only repair prior to road acceptance. Does anybody have any questions on this? It's a good idea. So do you need any motion to uh, approve this? Say do it or... Okay. Thanks, folks. So, uh, <clears throat> entertain motion for the uh, reduction of the bond. I'll make a motion to reduce the bond for phase one to $86,000 to cover the maintenance bond and temporary cul-de-sac for West River Farms phase, phase one bonding in accordance with the memo dated March 28, 2023 from Len Norton. We have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. <clears throat> Next one is the Charbonneau Gravel Pit on Pop Terry's Hall Road, a landscaping bond release. We uh, received a request for release once uh, Gravel Pit Solar closed on the property. So we did release that bond administratively on um, the means of Gravel Pit Solar. Does this gravel pit solar need to maintain a bond also? Or? Um, not with us, they're working under a permit from the state. Like I'm not Do you know um, how was the reclamation that was originally planned for the gravel pit? Was it that done or? I don't know that it, it met the final grade as presented. Um, however, Gravel pit solar at work on the site and doing all the work for their construction. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, although we may not have jurisdiction and may not have a bond, do we have any ability to deal with the mess they're making on Plantation Road? When we, but we're talking about dirt right. coming right. in. Yeah. yeah, they've been very good actually. They're, um, they have a a weekly inspection out there to look, you know, from the, the, the Natural Resource Conservation Service is actually the one out there weekly, and they provide photo documented reports on areas of concern. So there are some erosion issues out there that the Wetlands Commission is worried about and watching. And um, so they're active, and if there are issues, they've been very responsive. Plantation Road does not look to be in very good condition. They've got a lot of truck traffic going on. Okay. You can reach out to them easily. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Okay, then I'll entertain the motion for the release of the bond. Yeah. We did. Oh, we did. We did. Yeah. Just, just, uh, information. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No motion. Okay. For continued public hearing, we had PZ 2023 2 uh, for 118 Prospect Hill Road. It's been requested for a 30 day extension and it has been granted. So that will now be tabled until a meeting of April 11th. Okay. Uh, no new public hearings, no old business. So under new business, first item is PZ 2023-428 Abbey Road for a site plan modification for installation of sports field lighting. The application is BSC Group. Uh, incorporated this sleep show cell. Who's here to speak on behalf of it? Hey, baby. Hey. Um, good evening. So, our intentions are is to well, we went through. Uh, oh, thank you for the record. Joe's Tower Hopper. Um, Thank you. So for um, so what we're doing here is we're we're installing light poles for the soccer field, and we've already gone through zoning board of appeals because they're seventy foot tall. They've approved us, so now we're in front of you asking your permission to install them. You'll there is a on the plans, you'll see for parking lot lighting. Our intentions, our intentions, well, financially, we're only going to do the four that are up at the top. So basically, pull one, two, three, and four, just for some parking lot lighting. Uh, five through 12 was kind of a wish list of the director. And it's not going to happen. This is 
this was a three hundred thousand uh, dollar grant that um, Representative Foster got us to do this. Well, there were some concerns about hours of operation, and the hours of operation would end between nine and ten o'clock. And we're looking at potentially two to three times a week, maybe. That might be on the high side. We have a men's league currently there now that plays every Wednesday. And where our intentions are for the, the high school kids to be able to play under the lights and maybe even the middle school kids, because uh, middle school sports are back. Uh, so that's it. It's not going to be a big gen our revenue generator. You know, it's just an opportunity for us to light up our premier field, which is a premier field in the area. Quick question, Joe. You, you mentioned that other poles weren't going to be added. Those are the ones that are going up the driveway, correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. So basically 12 through 5 are not going to be put in. Uh, we're just looking to get a little bit of light and the top end of the parking lot for the people that are leaving. Uh, the lights will be set on a timer and with a possible caveat of the director being able to turn them off wirelessly, yeah. depending on that cost. But most likely it'll be a timer to start because we don't have internet up there anyway. But our intentions are to get internet up there and get some cameras up there and a little bit more security up there. So with none of the uh, access way lighting, is it any type of illumination on that access way at all? Or no, no. Well, there, I mean, there, there's the parking lot from Scout Hall's lit all the way up there. There's a floodlight on the end of the barn. The lights are generally behind the building. This field you're lighting? It's the field that's all the way to the back. way in the back. Well, the only reason I'm asking is there's a butters. Yeah. And I'm just this is, didn't this is way the field back we're lighting. Oh, so it's not there. No. Okay. You, you got zero all the way up the whole right side for nobody. Okay. Yeah. There's a um, pretty informative situation in the packet. That, no. Only one car. Only one car. That's a one way. Yeah. It's not very wide. Um, this one shows how the just like the field. Yeah. Yeah. This is muscle lighting. This is good stuff. So it's like the. I think we This is the stuff they they lamp the race track with. Yeah. Professional fields. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's only three companies. And Musco is actually uh, nationwide. Yeah, they're they've they've done a lot of the preliminaries for us. Did a lot of the stuff. They're actually going to install them. They're on one of our. Uh, they're on the source well bid, so we don't even have to put it out the bid. We're pulling them right off. So and they've been great to work with. There a reason that the uh, certificate of variance is inside? I'm sorry, I didn't the ZBA is not signed. Oh, it is now. It is now. Oh, okay. we we're waiting for the um, appeal period. We're going to put it on the land record tomorrow. Okay. We just came in and signed it. Yeah, and I, I like the uh, okay. picture showing why, you know, by going with Fowler, it yeah. creates the angle of trajectory lower. Less, uh, less light pollution that way. So it'd be nice for high school when they have their game, we can play over there at night. They used to rent generators. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we used to have to pick them up, you know, and then bring them back. So now they go play there for their home company or whatever. <clears throat> Is that a field set up just for soccer? Or mm -hmm. That's it. For the next so soccer field. Okay, this is, I see the pictures there. Posts, the oh, those are examples of what's yeah, other, other field, other field. Yeah. Gotcha. 
time frame when we're looking at? Well, once we wait the um, the fifteen day grace period after this, uh, we will probably order the hardware and get everything rolling. Um, sock there is spring soccer. It should end right around June. I'd like to get them in right after that, because then when fall starts and the high school gets back and soccer season is upon us, we'll be able to have that opportunity. And availability is not going to be an issue to meet that time frame then? No, because the company we're going with is actually partly the manufacturer of the, the only thing is the light pole. I think the light poles were 12 weeks out. Anybody else have any questions? No. no. Um, there's no other question. I guess we'll entertain a motion. Let's... Mr. Chairman. Yes. I understand this is not a public hearing, but I might have an opportunity just to speak for a couple of minutes. You have something that's pertinent and relevant for this? I believe so. Can I allow you to speak? Uh, for the record, J. Ursary, J. R. Russo and Associates. And I'm here representing a neighbor, Windsor Show Stable, who owns property across the street from the Abbey Road of the Fields and the Scott Hall. And they asked me to come and speak on behalf of them. And before I say anything, I just would like to say for the record that we're not here because we're opposed to youth sports in the town of East Windsor or in any town for that matter. In fact, they are uh, supporters of youth sports and so is J.R. Russo and Associates, but they are asking me to come here and speak due to some concerns about lighting initially, which I think uh, Musco did a very good job of putting forth a, a brochure that explained how the lighting works, even though they're 70 foot high poles. I think what they did was a pretty good job. And it was a great illustration for those of you who saw their presentation as to what it does. But there is some concern on the part of Winston Hill about the park being open at night uh, and how late at night and how often at night uh, due to the fact that, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with what they do there, but it's a uh, training facility where they train jumpers, uh, they compete nationwide, uh, they've gone as, as, as high as the Panyan Games, they have won there. Um, so it's it's a, a very, uh, it's a world-class operation and they're concerned about noise and, and hours and so on and so forth and they wanted me to come before you and express that concern, so that's why I'm here. And I know you always take those things into consideration, you talk about hours of operation, frequency, and, you know, is it going to operate every night of the week, which no, it can't because the field can't sustain that. It's a turf field and, and, and they understand that. I understand that. But you know, Joe just mentioned two or three nights a week. I'm not sure the fields could stay on that, but certainly, uh, you know, some occasional games, whether it's, you know, three or four times a month, once a week, twice a month, I don't know what it's going to be, but, but they have concerns and they were concerned about hours. Uh, there was discussion about hours at the Zoning Board of Appeals. It seemed the consensus was that 9 p.m. was probably about as late as it would go, which seemed reasonable, although, uh, you know, the Parks and Rec Director, I think Melissa talked about 10 p.m., and I'm not sure what that's going to be or what, how that's going to end up. But I just wanted to, to come before you and you know, express that, and if there was some concern by a, an abutting neighbor who's been there over 30 years and, and Probably most of you know has been very supportive of the Scout Hall and 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 the sports here in the town of East Windsor. And I just wanted to. Okay, may I ask, are they, are they in favor? They're not in favor of this. Then. Is that what you're saying? I, I would say it would be fair to say they're not in favor of the lighting of the field and, and operational and of this project in hours. Right. In favor of this project. Right. So once again, thank you for your time. I understand it's not a public <laughs> hearing. Thanks for an opportunity just to express that concern before here. Well, I'll just put one comment on that is that in the um, memo and in terms of conditions, it is stated in there the lights cannot be on past 10 o'clock. 
So there is a, there is an hour restriction. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen the memo, but, yeah. but thank you. There, there is an hour restriction that would be, be off by 10 p.m. And I would also think with youth sports, you probably don't want to keep youths out very late either. So that's where maybe Melissa was thinking the 9 p.m. may be more for youth sports. And yeah, and I think she actually indicated that for the most part, these fields are used by by the younger kids you know, in terms of uh, these ones are soccer clubs and so forth. But, I mean, understanding that high school, if you had your homecoming and have a JV game and then a varsity game, that it's it's likely to go maybe a little past nine o'clock. And that's that's understandable because mm -hmm. maybe okay. once or twice a year, and I don't think that's a, a, a major deal. But I just wanted to be able to express the concern to you. Thank you. And Joe, if I may ask, there'll be no alcohol or anything served at any of these events. Oh, sir. Okay. Anybody else have anything else that they feel mm -hmm. to discuss? Okay. And I want to pay the motion on, on this application. I'll make a motion to approve application PZ 2022-25, 28 Abbey Road, site plan modification for installation of soccer fields. One second. This is application number four. I, I do yeah. that type of four to 23. Oh, um, that's yeah, four. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to approve approve application PZ 2023-4 for 28 Abbey Road, site plan modification for installation of soccer field lighting. The applicant and owner is the town of East Windsor. The approval is granted subject to the conformance with reference plans as may be modified by the commission and disapproval and the following conditions and modifications. The plans and conditions one through 12 are included in a memo to the commission from Ruth Ann Calabresi, the director of planning and development dated 3-23-2023. Yeah, we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Dave. Any other further discussions? We'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Have your approval. Next application will be PZ 2023-6, 102 Winkler Road and Newberry Road for site plan modification for construction of a gravel storage lot yard. The applicant is BT Properties, LLC. Uh, once again, for the record, JR3 JR Luzo and Associates here representing BB Landscaping and BP uh, Properties. Ralph Thomas is also here. He's a partner in BB. Um, so this is an application for a site plan modification. Uh, you approved BB's project 15 years ago, Ralph? 12 years ago? 2006, maybe? 2006, so it's been a while. Uh, their main facility, as you know, is located on, on Winkler Road. The building is up front in the left corner of Winkler. They've got some storage area up in the front over to the corner of Newberry, and they own 36 acres, I believe it is. It's a fairly large parcel that runs way out to the west over here behind where Scorpion Fasteners goes in beyond all the way over to, I believe, what is now the IBEW piece that comes up to the front. So it's a large piece of land, it has a, a wetland and a water course that starts up in here and continues on down through into a brook and runs all the way down to the end and eventually gets into the brook that goes under uh, Thompson, 
finds its way out and eventually down under Route 5, uh, down by the Board of Ed Building, I think. I can't remember the name of the brook. I've forgotten. It finds its way into the Connecticut River. But at any rate, the modification involves a gravel storage area for some of their equipment. So uh, BB is obviously seasonal in terms of what they do. Um, summertime, obviously, they've got lawn maintenance, grounds maintenance, landscaping, you know, they've got equipment for that. Wintertime, we've got snow removal equipment and ice equipment and snow blowers and all of that stuff, and they've got all of that. They need a place to store it. Wintertime, where do we put all of this grass and landscape equipment and grounds maintenance and vice versa? So they've actually been looking around because I've been involved with Ralph and looking at other properties where they could build something else, and that's kind of hard to find. So They've got a little bit of land over here where it's going to help them, and it's over in this corner. I've highlighted it here in yellow, and it's fronts on Newberry. It's kind of the, I guess I call it northwesterly corner. Scott Coda is here with an application that you're going to hear next. He's located right next door. He's the neighbor. You've got Morning Dove Trail that comes into Newberry Village that's located right here. So. Let me flip this over and go to a plan that's a little bit different scale so we can look at some of the details here. So now we're located on Newberry Road. This is the parcel we're talking about. Scott Code is over here. Driveway into Newberry Village is right here. And what we're proposing is a gravel storage area that will be located in here. It's just about a half an acre in size. It's not that large, um, but it'll be a big help to them to be able to bring their equipment in. And when I say equipment, um, you know, snow plows, probably in the summertime, that type of stuff would be in here. In the opposite season, winter time, some of their grounds and lawn maintenance stuff, which would be locked in trailers, would also be located in here. It's fully fenced and it's gated up here in the front, the driveways here. And we've actually got a berm in this area, up in the front, so that this isn't visible from the street. And if you remember when we did, some of you were here, certainly when we did BB originally, the properties across the street are zoned residential. So we've got Newberry residential. When we were over on Winkler, you have the houses across the street that is owned residential, and there's a buffer requirement. So in order to satisfy the buffer requirement in this case, we're locating a berm up here in the front. We've got white spruce plantings on the berm, some more over here, a couple over here in the corner. So there's no visibility from the street coming in here. The only visibility is right here at the gate where the driveway comes in, we would be able to come in. And be honest, originally, and, and we sat with staff on this a couple of times and talked about it, we originally thought it made more sense to put this driveway opposite the driveway into Newberry Village because it would be kind of a you know, four-way intersection. And, and what we found was is that some of the folks in Newberry Village are a little concerned about the commercial growth that's going on over here uh, in the industrial park area on the opposite side of the road. And had we put the driveway here, when they come down to the stop sign and get ready to exit, they'd be looking right in the driveway and they'd be able to see it. So we thought, well, maybe that's not such a great idea. So we moved it as far to the east as we could, stuck it over in this corner, extended the berm across. So now there's no visibility. When they come out of their street, they're going to be looking at landscaping in a berm that's right in front of them instead of in the driveway access and getting into here so they've got visibility of of the equipment that's stored in here. Uh, there's no proposed lighting at all, uh, strictly a storage yard, long-term storage. The drainage is essentially sheet flow from northern side here, southerly, this way, southerly and easterly into a swale. We've got a drainage basin that's located out here, takes care of with a four bay, takes care of the treatment and storage and an outlet here that gets into the little water course and in the well and then find it, finds its way out through their property. So there's zero zero increase in runoff, takes care of the treatment. Lenny's re reviewed the, the design and the calculations. He agrees with them. Uh, we only had a couple of minor comments. One was on a detail that revision has been made. And I don't 
I don't know that there was anything else. I think Lenny is comfortable at this point in time in terms of what's happening here. So that's a basic overview of what they'd like to do. And if there's anything more specific in terms of the operation question, certainly Ralph, Ralph can answer those. He's much more familiar with their operation than I am. So any questions? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's around that gravel area. Entirely, entirely fenced. Okay. Chain link fence for security. Chain link fence. Yeah. They actually have had some security issues over the years uh, over at the main site. And I'll, those of you who have been by there will see that it's it is lit at night, but it's it's not fenced. It's gated. You know, so people, you know, you can't get a piece of a truck or a trailer in there, but but they have had some issues with people. Walking in, breaking into trailers, and, and stealing equipment. Dave, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I do not. Yeah. Driving by the, I'll say, main site on Winkler, the property looks really nice and well maintained. Um, I like the idea of the buffer and um, the berm so people aren't looking at this and can't see it. I wonder about the driveway coming in not being paved. I, I get the parking area not being paved. Well, the but I wonder how... The apron is paved. Oh, that, it is. That's required. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. So there is a paved okay. apron and then it turns to gravel. And, and I guess... I guess uh, my experience with... Um, yeah, it kicks out into the street eventually, yeah. And it, guts so yeah, it doesn't hold so up very well. I, I guess let me say this and, and Ralph can chime in if he, if he would like is that because of the nature of their business being landscape contractors whatever they do here is, is always going to look nice it's going to be well maintained it's going to have nice landscaping because if it doesn't it it's like yeah it's why would I hire those guys they can't even take care of their own place they're not going to take care of mine but but having known them now for 15 years or more and, and seeing them around the area and around town, I, I guess I could barely say that they, they do a pretty nice job uh, in, in what they do. And, and they're, they're uh, after talking with Ralph over the last year or so with this project, they're, they're uh, certainly uh, environmentally friendly. They're, they're the only landscapers I know, and I'm just gonna throw this in and Ralph can elaborate if he wants to. They've gone to electric equipment, some of their equipment, which you know you have seen as homeowners, but we're talking about commercial grade yeah. mowers that are electric. So there's no, you know, not the noise of the gasoline engine that you're used to. And, no, and I didn't know they had such a thing. But they do, and they're headed in that direction. And so uh, you know, I think they're a great asset that um, these ones are and have been for the whole area in the community. They do a lot of work in this area, and actually see. Uh, no, I just that. Uh, Driving up to the community garden, that is the millings, and yeah, it and gets it, gutted really it quickly. Does. It yep. does not hold up. But they'll, I would guess, given their business, they will make sure it looks good look like and it. doesn't tuck into the street. No, I'm just, it's a great idea with the driveway on the left. Yeah, we didn't realize that. You know the neighbors had the concern that they did, but they've expressed that concern, and so we decided that it was best of all. Yeah, it was good to me. Thank you. Plus, it's a lot drier at that end than that end. It's maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, Jay, then this is not going to be a daily drive in and out lot. No. This is this is switching me. No, this is a, a seasonal storage. This is twice a year. Right. They don't have activity we going from summer to winter. It's, it's not the daily trailer crew going in and out. Exactly. And all that's going to stay down in the exactly. lot. That's the building. Yeah. 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 That driver will be gated, I assume. Yes. Yes. Gated and locked. locked. Yeah. So I can't really see that it's going to be causing a traffic issue or anything like that. It makes it. You know, Seasonal switchovers when they're moving That's equipment back. Yep. Thank you. Good job. Staff have any questions, comments, or anything? All right. Okay. Nobody has anything further to add. I'll entertain a motion on this. 
I'll make a motion to approve application EZ 2023-6, a site plan modification for construction of a gravel surface storage yard. The applicant slash owner is BT Properties, LLVNC, BB Landscaping Service. The approval is granted subject to the conformance with reference plans as may be modified by the commission and this approval. And the conditions and modifications listed in a memo to the commission from Ruthann Calabrese, Director of Planning and Development, dated March 23rd, 2023, with uh, indication of the reference plans and 11 conditions. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Any member call for a vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Excuse me, Mike. Was your second Frank or David? David. Thank you. Next item is application PZ 2023 7 for 124 Newberry Road for site plan modification for specifying mealings and gravel area on plans for parking and driving. Applicant is Scott Coda. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to repeat myself in this application since my company has a work on this project. Okay. Chairman so Thurs is uh, recusing himself. Who's here to speak on this application? Hey, are you speaking to Scott? I didn't think so. No, I didn't know I had to speak. We're just looking to change the pavement to the miller that's on on the parking lot. We have a lot of heavy equipment that runs around there, so running with heavy equipment, the pavement's just going to get destroyed. So we'll be fixing it all the time. So the millions, it's easier to maintain them in bills in the most cost effective way for us. Excuse me, Mike, who's speaking? Uh, Dr. Lord. Thank you. All right, so I recall when you originally came before us, this was going to be a kind of a rent a bay type building. So the use has now changed on what you plan on doing with the no. building? No, it's always been a construction shop with some rental beds. Okay. And that, that's staying the same? Yeah. Day. Okay. So as far as the other tenants that are in there, um, what other type of business? We don't have anybody else in there right now. Okay. I'm just curious if there's going to be a requirement or any other activities that would benefit more from a from a hard paved surface than a than a compacted milling surface. Um, if we're going to have uh, customers uh, that we need striped bays, that, uh, parking designated parking spots, things like that. Mm -hmm. to maintain the stripes. Right. How often is it going to get? Painted? Uh, I mean, I, are much less reliable surface. Because your your plan shows striping, so how, you're planning on striping on top of millings. I mean, I can, but or we can just get rid of the stripings altogether. But I mean, well, I mean, how how this normally works is you submit us a plan of how you plan to operate your facility, and that's what we uh, approve. So, um, from from what we originally submitted to, I guess this is now your new proposed plan. I don't know which one you're you at. submitted your ad. The what? You submitted your as built plan that mm -hmm. showed the bituminous, the, um, the Oh, we just changed it from bituminous to you know. Okay, so that's the only change. Then everything else that was on the original plan, the, uh, the 
stormwater treatment basin, the, the landscape landscaping, the dumpster pad, the fencing screening, all that stuff is still in the in the in the plan. Yeah. Okay. And the plan still shows parking spaces. Right. And handicapped spaces designations. Yeah, as long as it's gonna stay sprayed with millings that don't heat up till August, then you're gonna lose track mm -hmm. of where everybody parks. So, <clears throat> so in the other conversation, Jim said that the first however many feet had apron had to be paid. It is already. It is already paid. <clears throat> yeah. Um, one of the other modifications that we made on a staff level is to, um, if you still choose to, it's about the same cost differential, um, replace the fence or substitute the fence with the same type of berm that we can saw with the people landscape. But my concern is, I think it's a great idea. I think the millings, I wish they'd do more of that around town personally, as Joe Boots. But my concern is if a person comes, uh, if somebody comes in with a plan to put down by two minutes, and they say, well, look, I can do this with millings. It's cheaper. And according to the town engineer and the planning and zoning commission has done this before, I'll apply. And if we say no, they're going to say, geez, you did it for Coda. How come you're not doing it for us? Not that, not that I don't think it's it's right to do, except what you're doing is you're setting a precedent where everybody in their right mind will go from my tools to this because it's going to save them tons of money. And didn't you come in originally with the permit saying it was going to be my tools? We did. Okay. But on the other hand, if they come before us saying they want to put millings in, then we can have the discretion of saying no, I suppose. So, so I don't know. It's just but I, I think it's a great idea. I, I agree with you. I agree with the whole concept, but I'm concerned about the, the concept of the town. I'm concerned about it for the town too, because as a driver of a car, not construction equipment, I don't find it holds up. So it's full of potholes and yeah. when you have a low clearance car. <clears throat> so I would hate to see it in Walmart's parking lot or you know, the grocery store. And, well, our, know, our ranks presently say it has to be by two minutes. So now we're making an exception, really. So that's the problem. The problem is, are we setting a precedent for and, anybody to come in? And legally, I think a, a, a good lawyer has put up a pretty good argument. Well, you did it for this guy. How come you're not going to trust? Got a precedent that says you can come in with an original plan that says I'm by two, by two minutes. And now when I get to the end, you have a CO already, correct? No. No, so everything that's stored there is just stored there. You don't do any work out of there. No, we're just still trying to finish getting our CO. We're yeah. trying to you know do the site work, finish all the stuff up. I mean, we got the pond done and, the, and all the erosion control and stuff, but we're still waiting to get our CO. So poop trucks yeah. that run in and out are just remotely parked there. Equipment's just no, nobody's running in and out every day. No, we had electricians have been there, the sheet rockers have been there, the plumbers are there, the heat guys there. I, I have a question maybe for our planning uh, planner. Uh, is there something we can do or do we have to make a new, write a new ordinance or what do we have? Not an ordinance, so, but a new tax amendment or what do we have to do? We're in already order to make this in the office, we're already talking. Um, Kind of on a lessons learned, like we need to tighten up on the regulations because we don't adequately define paving other than an all an all weather surface, and so that leaves it up to the commission to decide what does that mean. And the applicant has provided an opinion from Tim Kuhn, and then Len um, reviewed that and concurs with Tim that it's an adequate substitute. Um, I think going forward, we'd be looking for limiting the use 
I mean, to you know, especially use for a minute, we'd have a little latitude, but this is mm -hmm. just a regular you know, and if it's a site plan that comes in and then the determination today is that asphalt millings is the same as by two minutes concrete for a site plan, um, you wouldn't have the leeway to say no if they met that standard. So, so in order to, to do it in a yeah, we're gonna commercial have to, residential anywhere. We'll have to um, tighten up our definitions and what we'd like to see the commercial area. So how does that how does that affect this particular project? If we're gonna tighten it up, what does that mean? That means if someone comes in later on after we've tightened it up, we can say no, or they don't even ask. Or it, maybe it's only in a special use permit situation that you're given that leeway or a, a, an M1 zone industrial use not not so much a commercial customer facing. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm all, all in favor. To be honest with you, all in favor of this going through. Except that, as you know, I said a hundred times already, I'm just concerned about the right. future. Right. Um, and that we've had the same conversation in the office. We agree with every the opinions you've stated here. Um, one thing I just wanted to caution is, I think the appropriate way to address the request is to make a decision one way or the other, whether the millings can be used based on the information provided by the engineers. And But recognizing that impact, we just said, we don't want to see it everywhere, so we need to change our regulations. But I would do that outside of a site plan modification because of um, the need for wetlands weigh in on it and um but just you see this it's a very I, I discreet have. it's a very discreet request it's not a full-blown site plan lot which i know that mr coda is hoping to it, it, it'd be very together. difficult uh it'd be difficult to deny because all our professional people our engineer our town engineer and and say it's 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 as good or better so we'd have to deny it based upon it didn't meet the regulations. Well, no, what Ruthann is saying is that if truly we look at this as a site plan modification, it has to go back to wetlands for their review, which hasn't occurred. So what you were talking about here about just allowing so, the substitution. Yeah. So, and, so yes, yeah. and that could happen in two ways. We could withdraw, or the commission could just simply deny without prejudice, and then under a second motion, allow us said, a simple substitution. I I think perhaps Jay has some experience in this. If you may say something. Yes. Once again, I understand it's not a public hearing, but if I could just make a comment and uh, preface it by saying I'm not here representing Scott Burgos at this point, but or anybody across the street. But we've run into this in other towns, uh, a similar situation you know, where they did allow them to use uh, essentially bituminous millings because millings is bituminous concrete. So we're kind of throwing words around here that are um, a, a little different here. And, and I think what, what Ruth Ann just pointed out, and I'm not sure if anybody caught it, is that your regulation doesn't say that you have to use what we would call bituminous hot mix. And that's what we're used to seeing. You see the steam coming out of the truck and they're rolling it. That's bituminous concrete hot mix. Your regulations don't say that. Your zoning regulations say that you're required to put down an all weather durable surface. And and what my partner Tim Kuhn has said in his letter, and I think Lenny agrees, is that bituminous millings is an all-weather durable surface. And, and in our in our estimation is pretty much equivalent to a bituminous rolled hot mix. Well, it's impervious. Um, <laughs> it's really not a whole lot different. It looks different. On the application, he, he specified he wants millings and gravel areas. Okay, I'm not, he didn't say I don't know about the gravel, but I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to 
clarify some things as to what the regulation says. So you're saying the millings are bituminous. Bituminous is millings. It's ground up yeah, pavement, just like you have here in your driveway, which is bituminous hot mix when it was put down. They put them down and they steamroll. They, and they steamroll them. And now we've started recycling. Years ago, we just threw stuff away and buried it in the landfill. So when you steamroll it, does it melt back and become a hard surface? Uh, now, here's the, the here, here's the thing, and I'll, I'll just here. give you some of my experience, is that if you get bituminous millings, and I think somebody, it might have been Dave that said it, and you get it in August when it's coming up off the highway and you bring it to your site immediately and lay it out and roll it and it's 85 or 90 degrees out, you might not be able to tell whether it was bituminous hot mix out of the plant or whether it's millings because it looks pretty darn nice. Right now, probably what Scott has put down over there, and I don't know, I'm just speculating, was something that went down during the colder months. Now, I would guess because of the business that Scott's in, come this August when it's still there and it gets hot out, He's probably going to roll it, and it's going to look pretty good because when it gets heat up, with a steam roller, with a roller, it's going to get a little soft. That's and when he is. rolls it, well, yes, it it could the, the sun look, the sun bakes it in. It could look too. pretty good, um, but the glitch that's here in East Windsor is that your regulations don't say that you have to have bituminous hot mix, bituminous hot mix concrete, and that's. What we're all used to seeing, and, and it doesn't say that. But but the specs for the for the on the approved plan does it, that's and so that okay. 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 so there's there's your does the plan line. say that right? Do the, okay. the plans yeah. actually say uh, to the top asphalt list. chips? Or I answer you. He is my brother. Uh, okay, I'm asking a yes. factual that's question. Fine. <laughs> I trust you will okay. answer factually. The Stuff you put on the dirt road going to the community garden is that the same as the stuff we're talking? About? Okay. No, that's um, that's have you been out on East Road? Now, Mr. Gowdy, it's mad at me every other week on Peace Road, but on East Road, we actually we milled one year and brought it right out there and steamrolled it. And there's parts of East Road we never had to touch. I can tell you this too. You go to my house, I've been building a garage. I put it in my driveway three years ago. It is like concrete. Okay, so it's not the what and, I no, it's not what it's like that's all process. And we've been working with Melissa to pave aprons on both of those anyways. Because it's terrible. It's it a is terrible. Nightmare. And so when I that's right. what I was envisioning when we were talking. All right. So I mean. I think we're kind of much in agreement that substitution is really not the issue. The, the procedural right. part of it is the issue of how to do this without setting a precedent. Right. Um, and if I understand Ruthann correctly, then that has she spelled it out here in the in the memo is deny it as a site plan application, uh, site plan modification, but approve it as a substitution. You understand? So if you look at if you look at your memo, there's two separate yeah. second. Right on the first on the front page. Nope. Okay. So that will at least keep us correct procedurally that we're not approving a whole site plan modification. We're just we're just approving a Substitution of the materials, but all of the other aspects of the original site. Right, we have another there. modification that's going to be coming out once we get through some other stuff because we have to do that for the other parcel next door for parking on the equipment and stuff. So that's all going to be incorporated into one modification. So, but what's before us today is strictly more of a substitution. Yeah, the substitution of the Yes. Yeah. Everybody yeah, in agreement? Understand? Yes. That's what it's called, right? By two minutes, concrete is, is pavement, but that's the same as a milling, which is basically ground up by two minutes, concrete. And you guys look like you still have questions. Two minutes, concrete just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's different than like, two material. That's the technical name for it. Yeah. 
you're thinking of asphalt, but the technical name for asphalt is bitumen and concrete. And then like well, the concrete, concrete is, is zero. And that's more, yeah, you're thinking more like putting yeah. cement. Yeah. 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 Oh, I just worry about the lawyers. The lawyers, they saw the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you like? So, yeah, anybody, anybody that we're good? Everybody understand? Yes. Okay. Right. okay. Then, then. I okay. I will make a motion to deny application PZ twenty twenty three dash seven for a site plan modification for 124 Newberry Road and instead render a decision regarding asphalt milling substitution under a separate action. Okay, we have a motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so the application has been denied. Now yes. another motion. Motion to allow for substitution of asphalt millings in place of bituminous concrete as detailed on the site plan approved as part of application BZ 2021-09. All other conditions of approval and site improvements detailed on the plan set incorporated into the April 16th 2021 approval remain in full effect. Okay, there's a motion for a substitution. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dave. Any other discussions? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Approve the substitution. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, under other business, the first item was withdrawn for the informal discussion. Uh, so we are going to move on to item B. The affordable housing plan consideration of adoption. So we had a review of our kind of the final draft version of the affordable housing plan uh, maybe a month or so ago. And so we're thinking about the process by which we make sure we include the public in the adoption, the formal adoption. And so Mike and I were talking and we we're thinking that. Um, you know, public hearing isn't necessary, but maybe a, a kind of a listening session. We would post the final plan on the website and put it on the agenda, invite inviting folks to come. Um, and would you say that would be part of one of our regular meetings, or yeah. okay, so yeah. not, not a special maybe, meeting, just not a special meeting, a yeah. agenda item. Maybe have discussion. it on the, on the agenda for a couple of meetings. Okay. Uh, prior to so, so folks have concerns or questions or um, ideas, they could have the opportunity to the voice them. What would we cover that under? Because uh, it's not technically public participation because we're, it is an agenda item. So how would we not call it a public it, hearing, but get uh, well, we a lot find the, the same thing with land I want project? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I mean, you figure out the terminology you want right. to call it, you know, public discussion. Or... Public information session, we've called them. Listening yeah. session, we've referred to them as. Um, there's no rule. It's not like a an appealable decision that the commission's making. So you're not running a risk of creating an, an FOI issue if you take input from members of the public. Okay. Um, and I actually... Um, so that stuff is it's on the it's on the website. It was you did post it. Posted it. Yeah. So the 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 survey is there. The survey results are there. The presentation that was made with sort of the data, the demographics of East Windsor, and sort of all the 
information that went into it and then the draft planner on the planning and development page with a web form so people can basically so just open it up very basic information they can submit their comments which will come to you um so that can be i didn't do anything with it other than post it there we can share yeah. it otherwise but um so that that can be shared around and people can read it at their leisure sort of can go either way people get really interested in it and have lots of comments uh, or totally uninterested i would suggest put together some kind of a handout with passion and if there's anybody yeah they could open, come and, 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 and take the draft or yeah. yeah we can do that i did kind of have i have a little introductory statement which, that explains the statute and why we're endeavoring to go through the process and kind of set the table for what it is and then the powerpoints themselves actually do kind of lay it out a little bit um more clearly as well. So all that information is there. People can view it. And, um, and then we would review the PowerPoints at the meeting and just see well. You, it's the PowerPoints you've seen. Right. But yeah. In the in the public you may not yeah. have seen it that yeah. mm -hmm. the first time sure. at least run through them. I wonder if we should do like a voiceover one that they could just click on and like a screen record or something. Mm -hmm. We could. We could that's helpful too. That any anyone anytime you want to just I could probably splice the recording that John that made John, here. Yeah. With the screen share of the presentation, people could watch. I like that idea. Um, it's one of those things people aren't, especially in a town that already has ten percent affordable housing. The threat is not the same as it is elsewhere. Right. Well, there was a big threat at the uh, Aquater. Oh boy. There was a big, because yeah, yeah, it's it's an organized yeah. control. Oh, yeah. Speaking out against it, yeah, because 150 towns in Connecticut don't have 10 percent, so the, yeah. they have both. And and in many areas of the state, this is exactly the mechanism that they use to get they, they come in with the 8 gs all the time because the market is so strong in some towns that this is the only way to really make it happen because 10 towns yeah. don't want it. Fairfield County was all down there. They had like yeah. four people lined up, boom, 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 yeah. boom. They were just blasting this guy. But even towns, as, I mean, I guess the closest I can think of is Woodbury, and they were in the news. They only yeah, allow single family. That. That's it. That's all you got. It's not in the regs. It's not a special permit. It's not. That's all they have. Not my town. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they these this is an extremely polarizing topic in most places because it's seen as this significant threat. It does. We're like, okay, we got it. We don't right. Care. And the other and the towns that have it, it yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a, it's enough. It was it was put across as government overreach. Yeah. Yes. That's how the and the requirement of the eight thirty. J affordable housing plan, mm -hmm. having to make the plan, make the non-binding, completely discretionary plan. That <laughs> so, the, so the speaker was like, is there anybody new who wants to speak about well, something else? Part of this group of, yeah, uh, they have a name for it. They must have an organized group, the, the, the coalition that they strong joined. Connecticut strong town. Maybe something. Yeah. Yeah. That's from down that way. Yeah, definitely not us. Okay, so I'll be ready at the next meeting, or what's the time frame on this? When, when you want to? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about how to make it more. You know, how to just get out to folks that it's here. That we're still listening. Yeah, if you need back. more time to let it sit on the website and see. I don't know if you have a way you know monitor and how many clicks you're getting on it or anything like that. We can't monitor traffic. Um, I suppose if I post. Depending on how we do it, if we posted a new version of the video, if I sliced it and we posted that again on YouTube, we can track views of the video. Okay. Um, we can't track. And for the for the form, I'm trying to remember. It just has name, name, address, email, comments. And the only thing it's actually going to require them to provide are the, uh, the name and the comments. They don't have to provide an address. They don't have to provide an email address. We can toggle that on and off if you don't want their name, but we need to know. Who you're saying? Yeah, I think that's. I would just say, you know, look at what our upcoming schedule is and try to plan around the night that's not heavily laden with other things, you know, yeah. or, or we can put it at the beginning of the meeting. And so people don't have to sit through the entire meeting if they want to attend for that. We'll probably have a preview. Well, I don't know. It is.
Yeah, and we can, yeah, like you said, kind of push it out so there's some time for people mm -hmm. to potentially submit comments, whether we get them or we don't. People that, I mean, the, the people that are interested will probably say, I already, already participated in the survey, you know, right? They already have my comments. So, any so. need for public noticing outside of, uh, no, the value of due process. Okay. All right. Under correspondence, we have a frog notification email. So there's just a series of, of um, regulations being proposed by families around us. Really, um, pretty general. I didn't see anything that struck me as oh, of concern. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious on the Holland Planning and Zoning Commission. They have a setback requirement for farm, brewery, cidery, distillery, and winery uses, which begged the question for me, did we have adequate setback for an event center type proposal? In our regulation, so I was wondering what yeah. they chose as a setback. Seventy-five. I work in Tom. Oh. Seventy-five. <laughs> okay. That is the way that the regs are written. There, most of their town is is RDD residential. So these farm vineyards and stuff are going to be exclusively in a residential zone, and the setback was something significantly larger. I think two hundred, um, and so they're reducing it to provide for. Sort of reuse of an existing site. Hmm. Um, I can't remember the name of the top of it, but it's going to 75, which is consistent with some other separating distances they have elsewhere in the regs. Less than ours. Yeah. Yeah, we had the public hearing last night. No one attended. Well, so it was it not. Just beg that question. Um, what's the right distance? What's the right distance? And is 100 feet enough? Yeah, I mean, depending on. Or not. Right. Right. For big events. <clears throat> Although this exactly. doesn't this doesn't it really kind of speak of an event. It's, it's brewery, cidery, distillery. So yeah. well, it's the same. It would cause the same rockets that is of concern, right? It, I guess it would depend yeah. on scale. Well, David, this is a okay. yeah, very yeah. small. The use itself is not the issue. It's then the accessory uses that go along. Yeah, the live scale. the live music, the, right. the other. The food the trucks, the that goes yeah. along with it. Yes. Yes. Other uses. This is an existing farm. They have a they have a small brew house that they've established, and a very small tasting room that's maybe the size of this room. And so the issue they came into is now with all the COVID outdoor dining stuff because of where the barn that they're doing it in is located. It's within two hundred feet of a property line, so that's where this comes into play. So they can get some outdoor dining. So it just, yeah, the idea of, yeah, right now I think they have like four tables or something, but um, it's not going to facilitate any other stuff at the time as far as like events or anything like that. This is um, just a small tasting room. They may have some grapes, I'm not sure. Okay. So that leads us to our uh, executive session. So we're going to officially enter into executive session at uh, 7.38 p.m. Oh. Oh, yeah.